A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Pessians. Brothers and sisters, you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of light, for light produces every kind of goodness and righteousness and truth. Try to learn what is pleasing to the Lord Take no part in the fruitless works of darkness. Rather, expose them, for it is shameful even to mention the things done by them in secret. But everything exposed by light becomes visible, for everything that becomes visible is light. Therefore, it says, Awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. As Jesus passed by, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, neither he nor his parents sinned. It is so that the works of God might be made visible through him. We have to do the works of the one who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had said this, he spat on the ground and made clay with the saliva, and smeared the clay on his eyes, and said to him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which means scent. So he went and washed, and came back able to see. His neighbors and those who had seen him earlier as a beggar said, Isn't this the one who used to sit and beg? Some said, It is. But others said, no, he just looks like him. He said, I am. So they said to him, how were your eyes opened? 
He replied, the man called Jesus made clay and anointed my eyes and told me, go to Siloam and wash. So I went there and washed and was able to see. And they said to him, where is he? He said, I don't know. They brought the one who was once blind to the Pharisees. Now Jesus had made clay and opened his eyes on a Sabbath. So then the Pharisees also asked him how he was able to see. He said to them, he put clay on my eyes and I washed and now I can see. So some of the Pharisees said, this man is not from God because he does not keep the Sabbath. But others said, how can a sinful man do such signs? And there was a division among them. So they said to the blind man again, what do you have to say about him since he opened your eyes? He said, he is a prophet. Now the Jews did not believe that he had been blind and gained his sight until they summoned the parents of the one who had gained his sight. They asked them, is this your son? who was born blind, how does he now see? His parents answered and said, we know that this is our son and that he was born blind. We do not know how he sees now, nor do we know who opened his eyes. Ask him, he is of age, he can speak for himself. His parents said this because they were afraid of the Jews, for the Jews had already agreed that if anyone acknowledged him as the Christ, he would be expelled from the synagogue. For this reason, his parents answered, he is of age, question him. So a second time, they called the man who had been blind and said to him, give God the praise. We know that this man is a sinner. He replied, if he is a sinner, I do not know. One thing I do know is that I was blind and now I see. So they said to him, what did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered them, I told you already and you did not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you want to become his disciples too? They ridiculed him and said, You are that man's disciple. We are disciples of Moses. We know that God spoke to Moses, but we do not know where this one is from. The man answered and said to them, This is what is so amazing, that you do not know where he is from, yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners, but if one is devout and does his will, he listens to him. It is unheard of that anyone ever opened the eyes of a person born blind. If this man were not from God, he would not be able to do anything. They answered and said to him, You were born totally in sin, and you are trying to teach us? Then they threw him out. When Jesus heard that they had thrown him out, he found him and said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered and said, Who is he, sir, that I may believe in him? Jesus said to him, You have seen him. The one speaking with you is he. He said, I do believe, Lord. And he worshipped him. Then Jesus said, I came into this world for judgment, so that those who do not see might see, and those who do see might become blind. Some of the Pharisees who were with him heard this and said to him, Surely we are not also blind, are we? Jesus said to them, if you were blind, you would have no sin. But now you are saying we see, so your sin 
remains. The Gospel of the Lord. I first learned about my own poor vision when I was in sixth grade. Like many, like many children at a similar time in life, I was unable to read what was being written on the blackboard in the front of the classroom. So my parents took me to have my eyes examined and it was determined that I was going to need to wear glasses for distance. I'll never forget the ride home after we picked up those new glasses. I saw things I never knew I was supposed to see. My parents were shocked to find out that I'd been unable to read or make out the huge letters on a, on a marquee that was not far from our home. I remember, too, the next morning when I was getting ready to leave for school, I looked out the window and I told my mother that I saw the buds on the trees that were leafing. I'd never, never noticed that before. And again, she was surprised that I hadn't seen that. I suppose you could say that my life was changing and for the better. Now, while many of us may have had a similar experience, few of us know what it is like to be truly physically blind. Though we may have had to resort to obtaining glasses or contacts at some point or maybe even cataract surgery, our visual impairment has probably been somehow resolved through the wonders of modern or actually not so modern medicine. Even though we may stumble around in the darkness of an unlit room, again our dilemma is easily resolved when the lights come back on. So few of us would truly understand the plight of the man born blind who is featured in today's gospel. Although our temporary circumstances might offer a glimmer of insight. Obviously, the readings today are about darkness and light, blindness and sight. But they are about so much more than the physical aspects of these things. And St. Paul makes that clear when he speaks of living as children of light. It is baptism that enlightens us. Baptism that allows us to live as children of light. And a part of the rite of baptism involves the newly baptized receiving a candle that has been lit from the Paschal or Easter candle that symbolizes the risen Christ. Enlightened by baptism, we are called to live as children of light. What is it that happens in baptism? That our spiritual eyes are open, that we no longer stumble about in a spiritual darkness? Well, of course, the stain of sin is washed away. You see, sin inhibits us from seeing spiritually the way that we ought to see. Sin prohibits us from seeing life as God would have us see it. Once sin is washed away, we can see more clearly the way God intends us to see, the way God created humanity in the very first place. As Jesus used spittle and clay and had the man born blind wash in the pool of Siloam in order to restore his sight, so the church uses water and word to heal us of our spiritual blindness. When we live in God's grace, we are better able to see the reality of the world as God sees. We no longer stumble about in darkness. But perhaps we ask, why is it that I still feel as though I'm in some sort of darkness? Why am I not able to see as clearly as God 
wants me to see. Of course, it is sin that clouds our vision. It is sin that overshadows the light of Christ in our lives. And though we have been cleansed from sin through the waters of baptism, we do fall again and again. So just how do we get back what was ours when we were first baptized? How do we see clearly again? Well, we know that we cannot be re-baptized. Baptism is a one-and-done sacrament that's not repeated. You know, of course, that the sacrament of penance was given for the forgiveness of sins committed after baptism. It's no wonder that the fathers of the church saw the sacrament of penance as a kind of renewal of our baptism, a way of returning to the light and the life that was first ours when we emerged from those waters of baptism. Perhaps we often forget the gift that is ours in the sacrament of penance or confession or reconciliation, whatever, may, whatever name you know it by. As some in our community are being called to baptism in these last weeks of the Lenten season, it could be that others of us are being called to renew what took place when we were baptized through the healing and restorative power of the sacrament of penance. Though the world may be clouding our vision, I know we all want to see more clearly. And it is Christ that offers us that opportunity to see, not as man sees, but rather as God does. This is only possible through his grace. Whatever may be clouding our judgment, whatever it may be that is holding us back, we must trust that the God of mercy awaits us in the sacrament of penance. He longs to give us from the abundance of his grace. He longs to share with us the fruits of his passion and death. May we use these last weeks of Lent to respond to our Lord's invitation to see more clearly. There are a number of times that are being made available for confession in these last weeks. If those don't fit your schedule, Father and I are happy to find a time that does work for you. It is the Good Shepherd who awaits us in the sacrament of penance. And he wants each one of us to experience his grace his light, that we may not stumble, but walk as true children of light. As much as I knew that those glasses that I got back in sixth grade were helping me to see better, I have to admit that I tried to avoid wearing them. I didn't like being called four eyes, and I didn't particularly care for the way they made me look. I already looked pretty Nerdy, I know that's hard to believe, especially somebody who looks so good in pink, but trust me. But I learned to love what they did for me, how they helped me not only to see the board at school, but all the things in the world that they were opening up for me. They actually made my life better. I'm sure that there are a few of us who really enjoy going to confession bearing our souls to that priest on the other side of the screen. But it does make us feel better. I know I experience that each time that I go. I guarantee it will do the same for you. So let us live in the light of Christ, the light of his mercy.
I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered day and was buried. On the th In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Trusting that the Lord does not grow weary of listening to our prayers, we now entrust our needs to him with confidence. that we may be free from the false values that can render us blind. We pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. That our own days be transformed into the acceptable time of grace, salvation, and peace. We pray to the Lord. that those who have strayed from the faith may be enlightened by the light of Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. That we be zealous in carrying out good works that draw others to the light of the Lord. We pray to the Lord. that those burdened with difficulties would find their ser sorrows transformed into joy, we pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. That we would profess our faith even in the face of persecution and ridicule, we pray to the Lord. that our generous response to the Bishop's Lenten appeal will help bring light to those served by the various ministries of our diocese, we pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the petitions kept within our hearts today, we pray to the Lord. Loving Father, we desire to live as your faithful children both now and in the life to come. In your mercy, hear and answer the prayers we make this day through Christ our Lord. The second collection today is the annual Catholic Relief Services collection. Please be generous. As our gifts are prepared, please join us in singing number 976 in the Red Worship Book. He healed the darkness of my mind, number 976. <laughs> See? 
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. We place before you with joy these offerings, which bring eternal remedy, O Lord, praying that we may both faithfully revere them and present them to you as is fitting for the salvation of all the world through Christ our Lord. 
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, by the mystery of the Incarnation, he has led the human race that walked in darkness into the radiance of the faith and has brought those born in slavery to ancient sin through the waters of regeneration to make them your adopted children. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration. And we, with all the hosts of angels, cry out, and without end acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, Graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, 
we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Luke, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence, we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Michael, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you've gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. To him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
As we come forward to receive the Eucharist, please join us in singing number 965 in the Red Worship Book, Healer of Our Every Ill, number 965.
the splendor of your grace, that we may always ponder what is worthy and pleasing to your majesty and love you in all sincerity through Christ our Lord. Our final soup supper of this Lenten season is this coming Wednesday evening. Uh, also, confessions are being heard Wednesday evenings, Friday mornings, Saturday afternoons, and other times as posted in the narthex. Uh, and uh, today after Mass, the Knights of Columbus are once again hosting donuts and coffee. So have a cup of coffee and a donut and enjoy the fellowship with, your, uh, other, with other parishioners. The Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. Look upon those who call to you, O Lord, and sustain the weak. Give life by your unfailing light to those who walk in the shadow of death and bring those rescued by your mercy from every evil to reach the highest good through Christ our Lord. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. Saint Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Please join us in singing number 650 in the Red Worship Book, Amazing Grace, number 650. Let's see. 